So people do these super shops. They fill a car or a van with whatever they can manage and then drop it ad hoc at the jungle. Nobody knows when their next meal is coming, the next medicine, the next sleeping bag or pair of shoes. They just wait and make things last for as long as they can. April 2016, my first visit. I see the back doors of a van fly open to reveal stacks of fruit. Strawberries mainly, but also oranges, apples, bananas. You can imagine what that looked like in the crippling Calais heat when things are being rationed to such an extent. News travels metres in milliseconds. A horde of children charge towards the van, squeals of glee and desperation. The bell before the six-week break, a stack of gifts at Santa's Grotto, a fleeting handout of sweetness. Now, when riot police are managing crowds, they're told that if over half a dozen people charge at once, they could be trying to incite a riot. To an extent, I can understand that. But when the people are children, and the charging towards fruit, the deployment of CS gas canisters seems a tad disproportionate. Eyes widen, heels spin, they flee as fast as they can. The men wear helmets and shields, the boys only t-shirts and terror. Unscathed eyelids barely bat, the van is now invisible. But as the canisters empty, in a vacuum of noise, you can just about grasp on the ghost of the Gestapo. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Uh, welcome to tonight's penultimate Insta session. This is Insta session number 49, and I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Mohammed Musa. Uh, Mohammed Musa is a poet from Gaza. He was born in Gaza and started writing poetry there. Um, during one of the one of the several wars uh, that they've had to endure at the hands of the Israeli defence um, outfit, so I am going to invite Mohammed to join tonight, and he is going to share some of his fantastic poetry. Um, Mohammed is uh, the host of the Gaza Guy podcast. He is also a freelance uh, journalist. So here we go. Hello. Hello. How, Hi, are you? how are you, man? I'm fine, how are you? Uh, good, thank you. Thanks so much for agreeing to do this tonight. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. You know, I would apologize if I, when I say that uh, I can't continue the live after just 30 minutes maximum because the cafe will be closed after that. That's fine. Okay, no worries, no worries. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so you started writing poetry. You said that at the time you had three hours of electricity per day. Is that right? It was, and you would... yeah. It was uh, during the 2014 war uh, on Gaza. I was uh, in my room. We only uh, have uh, three hours of electricity during war, sometimes two, sometimes it's completely dark. And I start typing what I was feeling at that moment. Um, at that time, I was a student of English literature, so I read a lot of English poetry. I read. Uh, I was a fan of poetry, fan of literature. I start typing what I was feeling at that time. Then my first poem came out, which was "I was born in Gaza." Yeah, absolutely. I, and you... shared, oh, I shared it on social media. I've seen the response from the from the people. It was uh, amazing, honestly, to see the feedback. Absolutely. And did you then go on to write a collection called I Was Born in Gaza? Is that right? You wrote a book. Uh, you, brought, <laughs> you brought memories, man. Like, uh, I usually, it's, I, I didn't publish this collection. Okay. Uh, look, look, look at the coincidence. You brought this up and I had, had the, cop, the only copy of that book the, in my bag. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. Uh, I was trying to find a copy online to see if I could buy one, but no, yeah, I couldn't find it. It's, so you've got the only published. one, right? It's not published. Oh, wow. It's not published. Oh my goodness. Uh, how wow. you wrote this out? <laughs> okay. I wrote this, uh, it was written during some, uh, most of the poems in the, in the anthology were written during uh, the wartime. Right. Right. Yeah, things um, about war, about love, about everything. But I was a beginner at that time, so <laughs> I think like evolved or advanced more right now. Right. Fair enough. I appreciate that. Um, 
well, would you be happy to share a, a poem, um, whether it's that one or I was born in Gaza or whatever you fancy sharing? I was born in Gaza. Yeah, I would like. Okay. I was born in Gaza, the city of lost yearning, fading memories, and missing hope. I was born here in a hopeless township. I call for peace. I call for help. I was born in Gaza to witness the cruelty of siege and draw the tears of wars on the walls of the graves. Where I, I was born in a besieged city where death, deprivation, and poverty invaded everybody. I was born in Gaza to redefine the meaning of peace, remember many fearful scenes and soothe the city of fears. Where I was born, dreams are buried alive, but I'm not scared to free my peaceful heart, defy my throbbing life, and beat the stormy winds of wars. Ladies and gentlemen, I was born in Gaza, and one day I'll be back home. Wow, that's incredible. That's, that was the first one. Yeah, so that was the first one that you wrote? That was the yes, first poem? That was no. Yeah, I, I like the reaction uh, from the people. Like they listen more when you talk in the in the tone of a poet or a poetry lover more than if you write like a journalist or activist or whatever. Yeah, of which uh, well, absolutely. And and you set up the Gaza Poet Society in twenty eighteen. Is that right? Uh, in two thousand and eighteen, uh, I founded the community. As I told you, it was a student of English literature, and I was looking for a community where I can share and perform um, poetry in both languages, English and Arabic. And in Gaza, there weren't such thing uh, to do. So I've decided to create that community and to be the, like, to be the first community uh, of a spoken word in Gaza where poets who write in English and Arabic could gather, share, write, and perform for sure. Yeah, it's an amazing thing to see. And I think it's just so important that people around the world listen to your story, your poems. And like you say, I know that you're a journalist yourself, but I think a lot of people might connect with a poem first and then go on exactly. to read the article. Yeah. So, that's what I wanted to talk about in the recent article that I had published on Al Jazeera about, uh, about poaching as an outlet, like, uh, for people or for uh, yeah for people like me who was born in in a war zone area in a war territory so poetry was a medicine for for me and people in my age and yeah for us escape yeah was escape. yeah there's such an incredible thing for you to have done. It's so important. And uh, especially with the bookstore as well, what happened with the bookstore last month, you know, that's just awful news. Um, Definitely. Like, why would you attack a bookstore? Why would you attack the largest bookstore where, where the memories for all the poetry lovers, for the literature lovers, uh, passionate readers, uh, you know, anyone who's in love with reading, with poetry, with writing, with books, know that place. Uh, it's, it's a destination, it's a desired destination for every, for everyone in Gaza, young, old, whatever. So why would you attack that place? You wouldn't know. No, and I, yeah, I can't imagine how difficult that must be. It's, it's awful. Um, well, um, I think it's would... just to, to, uh, to change the features of the city. So you as, uh, as a Gazan or as someone from Gaza will, will not like to live there anymore. Like this is not the place that I used to grow up in or used to see or used to like or used to live in. That's why also right? to make it difficult, make it harder on you as a Palestinian living there. Yeah. I it's something it doesn't feel like home anymore. I guess, yeah, that's just, so, yeah. Um, well, would you, would you be up for sharing another poem? Yeah. Cool. Fragments from my city of sorrows and joys. 
I'm in love with my city of sorrows, with every joy of it, the morning scent of its sea, the matterly blues of its sky, the laughter from coffee shops, the screams of cab drivers, the gossip of old women, the smell of dang alleys. There, along crumbling walls and urals, taught to eternalize their dreams while aging souls sit in their doorways, drinking strong tea at noon and reading their fleeing present in the day's news. A brown-eyed girl says from a window, a small boy returns from the sea with fish. I walk through my streets, among scars of old losses, rubble of broken lives. How do I say farewell to these memories? I feel cold. It's getting colder. My dear city, I have to say goodbye. I'm tired of your losses, of your sorrows, even of your joys. I'm tired of hope. Wow, that's beautiful. I'm tired of hope. Wow, that's just, that's such an incredible line. Wow. Um, yeah, I guess, like, you know, we see um, we see some footage on the news of what's happening and, you know, try and read articles, but uh, nothing can express it like a poet. And I can see that it's emotional for you sharing it. I, I really, um, I really appreciate it. Um, Thank you. And I... I just hope that uh, more people in the UK and the rest of the world listen to more po Gaza poets. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, so, with this, have you have you formed a group of friends through the Gaza Poet Society? Do you regularly do readings together and sort of like share stories together? Uh, as, a as as I, I told you before, uh, during uh, since since I founded the community in two thousand and eighteen, uh, we used to gather, uh, exchange. Poems. Uh, we used to meet at the at the beach of Gaza. Also share poetry and music. And talk. We uh, do uh, workshops also to train the poets to perform poetry. We connect with international communities. Like if there wasn't COVID and other things, we would meet right now. And we don't have a physical space. Like we would go to an institution and negotiate with them. They could provide a room for us or a space where we could share poetry and gather. Uh, we connect with communities from New Zealand, from UK, from uh, US, from all over the world. Yeah, wow. And um, we published yeah. our anthology, Love and Laws, later uh, in 2019. Well, great. Okay, so Love and, love and Laws, is that available for people to buy online? Would that be something I mean, we could buy? Uh, well, our friend in the UK, Beba Maria, she's from Devon used to uh, bring cubbies and send for anyone who would like to buy uh, and support the community. And she was, I mean, Beba, like, she's from the UK and she's amazing activist, amazing poet who always uh, supported the community, give, like, give us feedback on, on what we write and do activities with us. So thank you for Beba, like, Whatever I do, I will always mention Beba, who's always been there, who's always been supporting. Uh, you know, uh, she was with me with the idea of the anthology, helped me with the idea. So she printed Kubis because she knows, like, I cannot send Kubis to from Gaza to any place in the world. So she would have prepared, she would have print the Kubis and uh, send them uh, to anybody in the, to anyone anywhere. So. Um, you can email Society at gmail.com if you're in the UK and email Beba. She can send you a physical copy. Yeah, Beba. Okay, I'll spread the word. I'll tell people in the UK to do that. Thank um, you. And say thank you to Beba if you meet. Of course, yeah, great, yeah. Um, well, do you, uh, do you fancy sharing another poem? Yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Target. You dream, you're a target. You speak, you're a target. You walk, you're a target. You think, you're a target. You sing, you're a target. You laugh, you're a target. You breathe, you're a target. You live, you're a target. You are not human. This is their target. 
Well, yeah, that's just well, it's it's amazing. Um, I just can't imagine how that feels. I've got to be honest, I just cannot imagine how it feels. But it's just so yeah, important, yeah. That people that, you know. Where are you guys are flying from? Um, I, I I bought it online. Um, I just I, I take it to some demonstrations. You know, it's just important to show yeah. solidarity. There Thank are. You so much. Like I live in Leeds, but I've been protesting Leeds, and there've been big protests in London and other big cities. So, oh, like, I've seen the footages. Uh, yeah, this is something indescribable. Thank you all for all the work you've done. To see the word like finally speaking out as guys and as Palestinians, this is heartwarming to be honest. So, uh, do not be little what you're doing if you participate in a protest. If you speak out, this is very helpful. And we as Palestinians appreciate it more than you can more than you can imagine. Well, well, it's it's for, it's only a tiny thing, but it's the it's the least we can do. To not speak out about it is to be complicit. I think so. Exactly. Um, yeah. And uh, as as you mentioned uh, in the uh, in the article, an eighteen year old poet that I've interviewed. Uh, maybe I have I have what is what she said here. No, I don't have it. Maybe I do. She mentioned like, uh, she said a statement that I find it like, wow. She's na her name is Nadine Murtaja. She's a poet. And uh, she said uh, her message to the world when I interviewed her. Even if Palestine is not your national or political issue, don't forget that it is a human issue in the first place. I could, <laughs> and but one, um, you know, uh, one of uh, the poems written by a poet under uh, under the palm being she was afraid and she was timing to her words that she f she thought would be her final uh, words. Uh, her name is Maha Jaraba. She survived. She survived the war, thanks to God, but uh, her words were like, uh, so, so, so beautiful. Uh, she said, Maha, she said that writing is the life we miss and Gaza is what made us poets. It is what made us been tearful poems. Writing is the only free medicine in the city. That's not the text that she wrote. Uh, I'm trying to find what she wrote. Writing is the only free medicine in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also asked her about her message to the world. She mentioned, I want the world to know we are here. We have dreams. We want a better tomorrow, not only to take our share of pain, but also to take our share of life. Yeah. Yeah, that's she's that's amazing, amazing, man. She's twenty-three, and she wrote this. Yeah, just um, yeah. I, uh, it's, uh, another another poet was uh, Omar Musa. He's my little brother. When I interviewed him, he said, "Like, uh, I I asked him if uh, like, do you wish that what your poetry or what you're writing will reach the world, uh, will reach the people outside Gaza?" He answered, "Like." Maybe they read my poetry, but all I have to do is write. And if I want to send a message to the outside world, I would say there are those who are living in spite of all the death around us. And when I asked him, do you write during the war time? He said, I think destiny is the one who's writing me a poem, whether it is a poem of death or a poem of life. All I do during this time is try to survive the lava of aggression. Yeah. Well, I can see the words of this young people, man. Yeah, yeah, it's it's absolutely heartbreaking, but it's it's also um, like it's it's inspiring. You know, it's fascinating to see. It's something beautiful is coming of it, but it is just heartbreaking. Yeah. Exactly. Really. Um, well, I know that you don't have very long. Um, would you be happy to share maybe one more poem before you have to go? Or if you don't have time, yeah. that's fine. 
evening evening in Gaza will be my final poem, okay. and I apologize everyone for for this. Uh, it's seven thirty p.m. I feel like an empty place, uninhabited heart, deserted soul. I want to talk, but I don't want to open my mouth. Thrown away in the coldness of love, sightless are my eyes. I don't know what to do or where to go. I'm a traveler. Uh, I am a traveler and aware of his destination. I keep asking myself what is wrong with me, and I don't answer. Why am I not the person I used to be, the person I promised to be? The truth is, uh, I changed everything in me. Everything around me changes. Two, I take a sip of patience, watch a comedy show, try to laugh, to travel with a smile of a pretty girl, but I still feel nothing, see nothing. Electricity on, electricity off, sorrows on, sorrows off, joys on, joys off. How time flies, I say to myself, breathe, relax, feel life again, taste it. But I don't feel alive here. I feel nothing, as if I'm nothing too. Everything is worthless, my past, my present, my future. You keep lying to me. Things will get better. The future will be brighter. Morning will hold gifts for you. Cold nights will warm you. Sirs will leave you. But I can't lie, and I want to lie. I want to experience new things, feel new feelings. I want to know what life looks like. Instead, I meet the gloom every day. The gloom is my constant companion. Thank you all for listening. I thank you, Matt, for this wonderful opportunity. And maybe we will join again in a different conversation where we have enough time. And I apologize again for, for not staying longer than this. No need to apologize. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. It means a lot. Um, thank you, Mohammed. We will speak again. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. See you again. Take care. Um, that was uh, Mohammed Musa. Um, incredibly moving to hear those words and to hear uh, those poems. Um, please, if you don't already, follow the Gaza Poet Society account on here and also the Gaza Guy account. Um, so Mohammed hosts a podcast called Gaza Guy. Um, yeah, check out Gaza Poet Society. They're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And um, yeah, just 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 do what you can to to help. Um, it, sometimes it feels like there's nothing you can do, um, but you know there's medical aid for Palestinians, um, there are all kinds of causes and organisations online. So please show your support. And uh, yeah, take care. Um, we're having a week off next week, and then the last ever Insta session will be on Tuesday, the 6th of July. That's number 50. I mean, I say it's the last one. Who knows? But um, yeah, just for now, uh, take care. Um, support Palestine, support Palestinians, support the Gaza Poets Society, and I shall see you later. Thank you.